You will find uh, descriptions of antiquity, for example, Pompeii. Here on the upper image we see Vesuvius uh, in clouds beyond and before us the main square of Pompeii. On the left uh, is a, a fountain in one of the villas in, uh, in Pompeii. And so in, in uh, books like Pen Sketches from 1899, you can read about the city of the dead, uh, such as was described through the impressions of Sir Walter Scott. Other things you'll find have to do with art and architecture. Edith Wharton, author of The Age of Innocence, was the first woman to win a Pulitzer Prize for Literature. She was also an accomplished architect and designer. Now, in her book, Italian Background, she points out that in art, foregrounds have symbolic, traditional, and measured purposes. So, if you look at the background, that's where you'll get the true flavor of a place, such as with local Italian art. Courtly etiquette, another topic. Um, James Fenimore Cooper, author of Last of the Mohicans and Other Adventure Tales, was a sort of unofficial, or became a sort of unofficial ambassador to the court in Florence. So this social encounter takes place in the Pitti Palace, and Cooper recounts his impressions of the social and political differences between Americans and Europeans of the day. Henry James was a writer born in America who lived most of his life in Britain. He wrote such uh, short stories as Turn of the Screw and novels such as Wings of the Dove. And here we have the online version of Wings of the Dove. In this novel, the heroine who travels to Venice is based on James' own cousin who died young from tuberculosis. Henry James wrote at least eight separate books covering the topic of Italy. Nathaniel Hawthorne, author of The House of Seven Gables, also wrote The Marble Fawn, or The Romance of Monte Beni. Some critics say that this was the last and best of his prose. It was written in Rome and about Rome. Another type of description that you'll find uh, in these online narratives have to do with geography. Horace Greeley, the author of the phrase, Go West, Young Man, uh, wrote this about Pisa and the Leaning Tower. And that, of course, is the reason that the text is leaning, is just off-center a bit, because he's speaking here of the wonderful Leaning Tower and the fame it has acquired. Um, Horace Greeley, you may know, was a candidate for president against Ulysses S. Grant in 1872 in one of the ugliest campaigns ever fought. One senator called it a choice between hemlock and strychnine. Greeley lost and three weeks later he died, presumably not of either hemlock or strychnine. History we can learn about history. Um, Samuel Morse, the creator of the Morse Code, um, did some moralizing about how to recover from a civil war, and the example he used was that of the Civil War of Rome. Just as the so-called heathen Romans, as he put it, made no demonstration of triumph over the defeat of their countrymen in a civil war, likewise, the implication is that the United States could also bind up its wounds without excessive bitterness. Humor. You will find humor. This is perhaps not the best example of humor, since it's somewhat jaded and sarcastic, but we'll see more of Mark Twain's humor later. Here he says, I do wish you were in, in a letter to Joe Twitchell, I do wish you were in Rome to do my sightseeing for me. Rome interests me about as much as East Hartford could, and no more. That is, the room which the average tourist feels an interest in. Uh, now, Mark Twain had been in Italy so often that he was jaded and, and could afford uh, this sarcasm. 
Speaking of Ulysses S. Grant, another thing you'll find are illustrations. Um, when Ulysses S. Grant was still a general, he visited Italy. This uh, illustrated book was published later, and the particular page I've chosen has a text about Da Vinci's Last Supper fresco at the church of Santa Maria delle Grazie, but the image on this particular page that is shown is that of the Duomo, the cathedral in Milan. You'll find letters home, such as those of Louisa May Alcott, the author of Little Women. Here in this letter, she's relating difficulties of crossing the Simplon Pass over the Alps into Italy. Crossing the Simplon is an experience worth having, for without any real danger, fatigue, or hardship, one sees some of the finest as well as most awful parts of these wonderful Alps. Of course, philosophers visited Italy as well. Ralph Waldo Emerson here is uh, in an essay of self-reliance. He's philosophizing on the impossibility of escaping our own problems by traveling to a foreign country. This is a rewording of an ancient dictum by Horace, Caelum non animum suum mutant quitans mare curunt. Uh, those who travel across the many waters change the sky above their heads, but not their own souls. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow is a famous American poet, um, and he was a great lover of all things Italian. He wrote poetry in both languages. Here on the right we see he wrote on November 8, 1874, <clears throat> a uh, poem about the old bridge, the Ponte Vecchio, at Florence, and um, 16 days later, he then did it in Italian, Il Ponte Vecchio di Firenze, Garimi Fece, Il Ponte Vecchio Sono, and so forth. 